Logaston County, welcome to episode number. We have no idea what episode number this is. No, nope. with our but that's how we roll here. Sometimes that uh, Gaston's great, and uh, which is a podcast which we are recording right now. Me, <laughs> man, when I can't follow my script, I'm just I'm all discombobulated. As usual, I'm your host Stephen Long. We're coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia. And we are going to continue our discussion that we started, could be last week, a few weeks ago. Again, depends on when we get this one aired. But we started a discussion about leadership and specifically based on the book, The Way of the Shepherd, by Dr. Kevin Lehman and Bill Pentak and uh, Mark Benton. Our operations manager here at GSM Services is joining us again. And we're going to talk about the principle number two, um, they call this what he called again, the authors call the seven secrets of managing productive people or what we would prefer to probably say the seven secrets of leading productive people in leading productive and good organizations and teams. So just do a quick, real quick review. I'm going to just mention what the, the first principle was, and that was know the condition of your flock or know the condition of your team. So that just means as a quick review, if you want to go back and listen to episode, I think it was 106, to get a little more detail on that. But you, you, you've got to know the condition of your team. So um, they move on next. And if you listen to episode 106, you can get a quick summary of the book and how all that starts and how the, again, it's a parable um, about leadership based on a, a, a company named General Technologies. But the authors take you on a, a trip when you're talking about principle number two with the gentleman's um, professor, Back from back when he was in college, Theodore McBride's professor, Dr. Newman. And on the second, to, to learn about the second principle, Dr. Newman takes uh, Theodore to, um, I guess, an auction yep. um, where they are, for lack of a better term, they're bidding on uh, sheep or ewes. And, and so it, it's in the second principle is discover the shape of your sheep or discover the shape of your team members. In this particular case, it's actually... Shape is an acronym that we're going to, we will get into a little more detail, but it, it's in short, it is who is on the team and uh, another kind, another uh, book is, um, oh, I'm going to forget the uh, Jim Collins book. I've already just sold it, completely forgot the name of the, the book, but it's getting the right team members on the right seat on the bus, so to speak. And that's kind of what this concept, uh, good to great. Thank good, you. Yeah. Gosh. Man, can't believe I couldn't think of that. But I'm going to actually throw it over right over to Mark first and without really any other um, any other discussion or details. But so when you hear that, Mark, now I know you've read the book and you've studied this and you know you you're, you deal with multiple teams here uh, at GSM. You, again, as a reminder for our if you're listeners for the first time, Mark's also had some leadership experience in the in the um, military and the army. So he's got quite a diverse background on involvement with teams and leading teams. So when you hear that, discover the shape of your team, just kind of what, what comes to mind when you hear that? Yeah, for me, I think it's um, what do you want as a leader? What are you willing to tolerate? What are you willing to, what are you going to reward? What are you willing to, um, you know, go to war for, you know, uh, for me. So when I'm looking at the shape of my team, what do I what am I trying to accomplish and will this person fit? Because you can take someone that say is a top seller. Like, I mean, can absolutely go out there and sell, 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 sell. But if that doesn't fit with your team, he's, you're not going to be successful. You know what I mean? It, it's got to fit. You've got to have a, um, You've got to have a plan, I think, as a leader. When you take over a division, you've got to, to accomplish your goals. You're going to have to have a plan, and you're going to have to say, these are the type of people I want on my team. This, these are the type of people that I feel like are going to help us down the road of success. And then you have to kind of design that person in your head so when you're interviewing or when you're meeting your team for the first time, you're kind of qualifying those things. And then you get to a point where you're going, is it teachable? is this person going to be able to get on board with what we're trying to accomplish here or are we going to have to let them be successful somewhere else? And, and you right. know. Yeah, so ultimately, you know, the way they describe it in the book, um, that's 
I appreciate that, Mark. But the, what, the way they describe it in the book is just a couple of, of notes here. Again, I'm cheating. I'm taking this right out of the straight out of the book. So discover the shape of your sheep or your, discover the shape of your team. Your choice of team member can make team management easier or harder. Yep. You want to start with healthy team members or again healthy sheep directly from the book, or you'll inherit someone else's problems and know the shape of your team to make sure they're in the right place. On, on, again, kind of that concept of right team member on the right um, right spot or right seat on the bus, so to speak. And then shape, with the way it's described in the book, it's an acronym for strengths, heart, attitude, yep. personality, and experiences. So Mark kind of touched on that already, the very first one, strengths. But And they kind of described that as must have the seal skit, seal skit? The skill set <laughs> To do the job. Yep. All right. So that's kind of what you just touched on. Well, what about the second one when you hear that heart yeah. is the H in shape? What do you, what, what comes to mind when you hear that? Yeah. I mean, for us, um, for me, especially what, what's your motivation? What's, what, what's, you know, what motivates you? And I think we've even talked about this, right? I think um, we've read so many books that talk about success, 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 but success is different for everyone. You know, uh, success is, is not always monetary success. It could be success uh, taking care of a homeowner um, in their time of need. That's a, that's a uh, some people feel really good about that, and they have that heart for that customer, that heart for that team. You know, when you have that team member that sits back and goes, "Hey, look, man, uh, I don't have any kids, so Halloween's not a big deal for me." But I know that, you know, you've got two kids and you're wanting to take them trick-or-treating this year. I'm going to pull that on call for you. You know, I'm going to take yeah. that on call for you so you can go spend, you know, and that's the kind of heart or that 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 person that is going to, when a homeowner calls and it's 8, 7, 45, right, and they go, well, yes, ma'am, you know, I'm on one right now. And the homeowner says, yeah, this is my only source of heat. That technician that's going to sit back and go, you know what, I'll be fine. I'm going to go out and I'm going to run this call and take care of this customer. But those are those qualifiers for me. What is their heart? What is their motivation? What gives them a feeling of success at the end of the day? And getting down to that. Yeah, so motivation is an interesting concept, kind of what you just touched on. But another word that I've heard kind of in the same line is passion. Yeah. And that concept of passion for what you're doing. Now, this is where I personally might view some of this passion discussion a little differently than some because I think we, for the last, I don't know how many years, 10 or 15 years, especially maybe a little longer, you hear the it's chase your passion, find something that you're passionate about, you know? And and I think if you're lucky in some sense, that can be important, but I I just, as I've matured, I've kind of come to believe that that doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, what's the, what's that old saying? If you find something, you, 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 your passion is your job, then you never work another day in your life or whatever. I'm just a believer in bringing your own personal passion to whatever you're doing as opposed to chasing your passion. So, listen, I was in high school. I was passionate about baseball. Well, guess what? <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to play Major League Baseball. Okay, That wasn't in the cards. Right. So even though I was passionate about it, I knew that I just didn't have the talent or maybe the work ethic, whatever you want to call it, back when I was that age, to, to chase that. Now, I hope and think that I brought some passion to what I'm doing, and not just here, but the community, um, GSM, family, just anything going on here uh, um, in my life. But I just think that's, I think you just got to be careful with that when, you, when, we bring, when we tell young people or, or whomever, chase your passion, chase your passion, chase your passion, as opposed to, if you're a passionate person, bring your passion to whatever it is that, that you're doing. So that's, that's, to me, that's kind of two sides to that heart and motivation piece that I just kind of wanted to put out there. Um, so, again, this acronym SHAPE, the A, so we've got strengths, heart, and the A is attitude. So this is another interesting you know, concept, and it, it's so important in my view in so many areas, but when you hear – Again, in this context, when you hear attitude, Mark, what do you, what comes to mind? Yeah, for me, I, now, again, everybody's different, right? But for me, I believe to serve under me or serve beside me, your attitude better be that of a servant. You, you better be ready to serve. In leadership, 
you are not taking a step up the ladder. You are taking a step backwards. You're taking a step down because when you're taking a leadership position, you should look at it as I, now I get more. I get to serve more people, not I get more people to serve me. So for me, the attitude of a leader is going to set the tone for the group 100% of the time. And if you have a selfish leader, if you have a person that is all about himself and wanting to be served, that group will mimic that behavior. But if you have a leader that is a servant mindset that wants to serve those men, those men will lay down for him. Those men will, and they'll also do that for their families. They'll also start incorporating that in their families. They'll incorporate that in their church. They'll in, incorporate that in their lives. Um, it'll just be, you know, because then they understand, because we follow our leaders. I mean, we, we look at our leaders and we go, oh, okay, you kind of like, the, you want to be like that person. So if I'm an egomaniac that is down there, serve me, everything's got to go my way, and I'm not serving my people, then they're just going to become that. You know, so for me, right. that's the attitude. It needs to be that of a servant. So when that leader who is focused hopefully on the right attitude, when they're building that team, when they're looking at attitude, talent, skill, or whatever, uh, what is your view? Is is Are you going to take that person with that positive can-do attitude, or are you more looking for, you know, the talent that's going to immediately fit the skills needed for that job, maybe in a shorter term? And what, well, how do you how do you view that? Well, a lot of times, I think we've both seen it, right, is uh, short-term pain, long-term pleasure, short-term pleasure, long-term pain. Right, so yeah, you can absolutely grab that guy that necessarily doesn't have the heart of a servant, uh, that maybe is not your be best team player, but technically he's got what it takes. Go ahead and take him. But I'm from experience, I will tell you that it's very difficult to change that character. It's a lot easier for me to teach him the technical side of it, and and grow that person that has the right heart and the right attitude, it's a lot easier for me to grow him technically than it is for me to take somebody that is technically good and try to change his character. Right. I don't know. that I just... So I when, just, when everything else is equal, it's, it's, it's the attitude. Um, yeah. Character and attitude is really is, is going to take precedent over somebody maybe, maybe with... Um, with a little bit of skill, maybe. Is that, is that a Absolutely. fair assessment? That's fair. All right. So, That's again... Fair. That's our first three. It's, it's strength, heart, attitude, and then the P in shape is personality. So how does the personality fit in with the team? Yep. So, again, when you, you hear that in this context, what, what comes to mind? Well, same thing. Um, when you're putting your team together, you just have to look. I mean, I think every team, um, you probably know this better than I do, being the wolf, the wolf pack thing. <laughs> uh, but, and, and, you know, in a wolf pack, everybody can't be the alpha. Right. You know, you've got to have a joker. You've got to have a uh, kind of a mothering figure. You've got to have, you know, so everybody has a role in that team. And I think that, you know, that personality, they, you just have to know that they're, as long as that core is there, right, you have permission to play. And as long as they fit that permission to play and you've got a guy that likes to cut up a little bit, I'm okay with that. I like that guy because in a stressful moment, he can lighten that mood. He can cut a joke or pick at me and make me, and when I'm really just, oh, look at right there, he can make me go and laugh. And, and you need that guy. Right. You know, but like I said, as long as you have the permission to play assets there that you're honest, you have integrity, uh, you have empathy for our customers, um, as long as you have those permission to play assets, I can work with about any personality out there, and I like um, I like to have a well-rounded team. I think if you had a team of alphas, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, everybody plays a role, so to speak. Yes. I don't want to go down the um, – was it The Rock who said, know your role? Know your role. Back in the – that was back in the wrestling – my wrestling days, Naomi. <laughs> you have any idea what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, and, and you don't want I would I would I believe you don't want the personalities to all be exactly the same. Right. And that's not that's typically not going to work for lots of different reasons. So, but so 
diversity of personalities, knowing where they fit in the team, knowing what the mission is, and those are the personalities going to yep. fit within the mission that we're trying to accomplish, whether it's a team, organization, church, military, doesn't matter, athletic team, right? How do, how do all those personalities fit? Well, what you yeah. said about the mission is right, right, is you can take all those separate personalities and make a, you know, and make a team out of it. What I think has always been interesting is if you have a good, strong team that the minute the mission presents itself, all that goes out the window. It's, it, it's you know, everybody's focused on taking care of that, that issue. You know, the personalities are still there and everything, but like you said, everything drives to the center, to the mission at that point. So, yeah, good point. All right, so again, shape again. First four, strengths, heart, attitude, and personality. Now, this last one, the E, stands for experiences. Now, I really like, of the five, I really like how this is described in the book and how they go through this, and they're very intentional. If you notice, it didn't say experience. It's experiences, so experiences, so their life. What what does the team member bring to to the organization through their experiences, you know, up to this point in their life? Again, not just because I think with teams, especially in the working world, we think of what is their experience related to the job that they're applying for or the job that we're asking them to do. But of course, again, uh, I want to keep stressing that we are kind of talking about a work environment, but these concepts apply to any team, any Absolutely. organization. So again, you see experiences. Mark, what, what do you think of um, when, you, when you hear that? Well, that for me is always um, during the vetting process for me. Um, I like to do a lot less talking, a lot more listening. Um, because that's going to give me, I mean, yeah, you're asking the, the leading questions, right? But, but I like to let them go because um, that will tell you about their experiences. And one of the things that we see a lot is a person that has um, a lot of actual technical experience in this, in this craft uh, that we call HVAC. They can have good experiences. They can have bad experiences, you know, depending on how, where they worked at, the last place they worked at. This is what happened. And a lot of times if you can vet that through the hiring process, you can kind of get an idea of are they carrying that with them? You know, what now they can have great experiences and bring that to your team as well. But, I, you know, I stress for a lot of times with my field leaders and everything, I'm like, hey, you know, go really slow when we're hiring because you kind of really you don't want to bring in a bad um, you want to bring in someone that's already carrying a lot of resentment or a lot of right. you know baggage. I yeah, hate, I mean you know, again, it plays into especially, frankly, those last three right are, are really really related in my opinion: attitude, personality, and experiences. Because they're going to their their performance, how they fit in with the team. They are, it's going to be impacted by their experiences that they bring with them. Yep. And there's nothing, there's really nothing you can do about that. So part of this is just as a leader, I think the, their point here is looking at all five of these and understanding how that's going to impact the team, how this individual team member, what, they, what are they going to bring to the team here, right? And when you're discovering the shape, again, discovering the strengths, the heart, the attitude, the personality and understanding the experiences that this team member is going to bring and how is that going to impact the team, the job, the mission, whatever it is that we're, uh, that the organization or team or uh, is trying to accomplish. Well, you know, even if you read into the book, um, and I, I don't want to go you know too deep in, I'll let everybody read their own thing, but I thought it was interesting where there at the end um, he had a, uh, a you that was bullying and headbutting the other sheep and just, you know, causing chaos inside of his flock. And, um, you know, it, he had to deal with that. Right. You know, he had, he had to deal with that. And, um, uh, I don't, I guarantee you that he didn't smile when he had to deal with that. You know, I don't think anybody, any leader smiles when they have to deal with that bully or that, Opportunity. Opportunity, <laughs> yeah. Well, you've said it best. I mean, honestly, you've, you've mentored me on that a lot, which is 
you're going to need to be successful somewhere else. You know, um, I think, and, I, and I'll make I'll make Naomi laugh on this one, right? I think uh, Tupac said it, right, when he said, I don't want you to starve. You just can't eat at my table anymore, <laughs> right? And and that is, that's what it is. You know, when you have that team member that is not following the shape of what you want, I don't wish anything bad. You know what I mean? I just, you can't meet my shape. And so I've always kind of used that of, man, I don't want you to starve. I want you to go be successful. You just can't eat at my table anymore, you know, uh, because you're not the shape. You're not under my shape. So, right. you know. Yeah, um, no, that's a good way to put it. I think that's a clear representation of kind of what, what, what we're talking about because ultimately it is the leader's responsibility to mold the team, bring the team together, bring the team in, bring new teammates in, move teammates out, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. So the team – is as successful as a whole um, as possible. Um, so I want to finish with a quote here, we're gonna, and we're going to wrap this episode up. And it's similar. Again, I'm, I'm going to continue with these episodes especially, try to come up with a quote that's related to specifically the topic. And Zig Ziglar is one of my favorites, and he, in fact, there's a whole small books written that, that are nothing but his quotes. But he said, Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Yeah. So, you know, I chose that because so many of these, frankly, for me, are hard attitude, personality, experiences. I mean, it, they, these are strengths, too, but I think the other four more so than the, the, the first one are based on your attitude, your heart, attitude specifically. Your personality is based on your attitude. Even in how you react to your experiences is a lot to do with your attitude. And, again, my experience in 53 years – whether it's sports teams, going to college, the working world, organizations I'm involved with in the community, man, the, the, the general attitude of individuals, and you can bring those good attitudes together, so much can be accomplished. You are absolutely right. Any, any last words, Mark, related to that before we close this one out? No, no. I think we we're making Naomi happy today. We didn't run the 30-minute mark today. That's right. We're, so. we're going to, yeah, and so our listeners might be happy as well to get <laughs> – Good point. <laughs> Get this one out of the way. All right, so again, uh, principle number two, discover the shape of your sheep or discover the shape of your team. And, and as a leader, you really have to uh, be cognitive of how all the personalities are, are working together there. So, again, we'll continue this discussion again for principle number three here coming up on uh, another episode. But all the listeners out there, thanks again, as always, for listening to today's episode. And please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. You can learn more about um, us at gastonsgreat.com. You can email us at podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future topic, future podcast topics and guests. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. And as Naomi likes to remind me, please give us a good five-star rating. Thanks again to Mark for being our guest today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to, you, brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep co coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. Mm -hmm.